Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Turn to Ezekiel chapter 5, continuation of the Ezekiel series for how long, I don't know. I'm no longer on YouTube. I mean, uh, Facebook. Uh, every time I go to Facebook, my computer goes crazy. They are scanning my computer. I don't want nothing to do with Facebook. Fake book. And uh, Mark can go to hell as far as I'm concerned. I'm sure he will, but, uh, you know, I'd be happy to help him along. But, uh, you know. By, uh, yeah, no thank you. Verse 5. And ver chapter 5 and verse 1, Ezekiel. And thou, son of man, take thee a sharp knife, take thee a barber's razor, and cause it to pass upon thine head and upon thy beard. Then take thee balances to weigh and divide the hair. Now, in ancient times... Having a beard was a mark of distinction for men. Believe it or not, I'm sure it was the you-know-whos that invented the uh, idea of selling us razors to shave our beards. You know? Uh, believe it or not, that... Uh, I guess I should prove that, shouldn't I? All right, well, that could be found about the beards in 2 Samuel chapter 10, verse 1. And it came to pass after this that the king of the children of Ammon died, and Hanun his son reigned in his stead. Then said David, I will show kindness unto Hanun the son of Nahash, as his father showed kindness unto me. And David sent to comfort him by the hand of his servants, for his father. And David's servants came into the land of the children of Ammon. And the princes of the children of Ammon said unto Hanun, their lord, Thinkest thou that David doth honor thy father, that he hath sent comforters unto thee? Hath not David rather sent his servants unto thee to search the city and to spy it out and to overthrow it? Oh, yeah. So, you know, here it is. They're saying, oh, yeah, David sent these guys here to be spies so that they can figure out how to, you know, take the city in a war. So what happened? Verse 4. Wherefore, Hanun took David's servants and shaved off the one half of their beards and cut off their garments in the middle, even to their buttocks, and sent them away. So, when they told it unto David, he sent to meet them, because the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, Tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown, and then return. So there you go. So, I'm sure it was the you-know-whos that invented the razor for the beard, right? All right, back to Ezekiel 5. So God's telling Ezekiel to do something that's shaming. And thou, son of man, take thee a sharp knife, take thee a barber's razor, and cause it to pass upon thine head and upon thy beard, and then, then take the balances to weigh and divide the hair. Thou shalt burn with fire a third part in the midst of the city. When the days of the siege are fulfilled, and thou shalt take a third part and smite about it with a knife, and a third part thou shalt scatter in the wind, and I will draw, draw out a sword after them. Now the hair is obviously representative of the children of Jerusalem, a third are going to die in the fire of the city. A third are going to die 
by being smitten with the sword. And then a third part are going to be scattered to the wind and there's going to be people chasing after them with swords trying to kill them. And if you look in the book of uh, Revelation, there will come a time when the Lord is going to smite one third of the population of the earth, I believe, but at least a third of Israel are going to die. Who knows? Maybe Bill, uh, you know, the guy with a last name, uh, last name Gates might uh, just have something to do with that. I don't know. So, verse 3. Thou shalt also take thereof a few in number and bind them in thy skirts. So there's going to be a remnant in his uh, uh, clothing, Ezekiel's clothing, a remnant, are going to follow the prophet. Verse 4. Then take of them again and cast them into the midst of the fire and burn them in the fire, for thereof shall a fire come forth into all the house of Israel. Um, for believers, fire is going to burn our unfruitful works. For those that are not saved, fire is going to be their eternal punishment. Or their punishment eternally. I'll be honest, I've had people say, is, is hell forever or not? Well, it is going to be forever for the beast, the false prophet, and the devil. But for everybody else, I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure. And I don't think it's that important to know. My thing is, is to keep as many people from going there to follow the false prophet and the beast and the devil. Uh, you know, don't follow them. Go to the other place. Forget about hell. You know. I was an expert on uh, going to hell. Yeah. Especially about the time I was... Uh, Going in the service. I was an expert on that. So, verse 5. Thus saith the Lord God, this is Jerusalem. Remember, he uh, cut his beard and his hair and, you know, this is Jerusalem. The Lord's telling you. See, the Bible explains the Bible. You don't need, really, Chaplain Bob. The Bible explains the Bible. Thus saith the Lord God, this is Jerusalem. I have set her in the midst of the nations and countries that are round about her. Do you know Jerusalem is basically the crossroads of the Middle East? It's there by Africa, Asia Minor, and Europe. It's right there in the middle. So, if you were doing trade with Asia, they would go through that area from Africa, from Europe, you know, Asia Minor. That was like uh, the center of the world to the Lord. So, why is the Lord doing this? Well, verse 6. And she, Jerusalem, Judah, and she hath changed my judgments into wickedness more than the nations. Now that word nations is the same word for Gentiles. I don't know if they're talking about uh, the nations of Israel or the heathen nations round about. I don't know. Could be both. And she, Jerusalem, hath changed my judgments into wickedness more than the nations and my statutes more than the countries that are round about her. For they have refused my judgments and my statutes and have not walked in them. Now, what about hair? What did Jesus say about hair? Why, why is he shaving his head? You know, uh, one thing I've learned uh Guys that are bald are always jealous of 
people that have hair. Uh, but in Luke 12, verse 5, Jesus said, But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two farlings? farthings? And not one of them is forgotten before God. But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Uh, that's not much of a trick if you're bald, right? But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Also I say unto you, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. And of course, if you deny Christ before men, you'll be denied before the angels of God. Uh, boy, I'll tell you what, all these pre-trib, rapture, Zionist, dispensational churchgoers, they're in for a world of hurt. Yeah, uh, did you ever notice, you know, I've spent a lot of time in this stuff, ministry, making comments, answering people. I go to other people's channels that teach the pre-trib rapture or, the you know, that don't teach it. And everybody always has, writes a paragraph with maybe one Bible verse, if that, maybe one. Why? Because they can't, they cannot show you two Bible verses that are clear that shows you the resurrection of the church happens before the tribulation. They can't do it. Doesn't exist. I know. Because I've looked. And the devil planted that garbage so that people will lose their faith. Oh, Jesus was a false prophet. You know, we should have listened to the Jews. They've been telling us for almost 2,000 years, but we wouldn't listen to them. Jesus lied, pre-trib rapture. That's not going to happen. Oh, yeah. You know, it's just... But there is going to be a remnant. When they see who, when they, when they observe who is being persecuted and by whom are doing the persecution... There might be a remnant that wakes up, you know, but you're, uh, don't count on John Hagee explaining that to you because that ain't going to happen. No. People just don't understand. You deny the Lord before men, you'll be denied before the, before the Father's angels. Back to Ezekiel 5 and verse 6. And she hath changed my judgments into wickedness more than the nations, and my statutes more than the countries that are round about her, for they have refused my judgments and my statutes, and have not walked in them. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Because ye multiplied more than the nations that are round about you, and have not walked in my statutes, neither have kept my judgments, neither have done according to the judgments of the nations that are round about you. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, am against thee, and will execute judgments in the midst of thee in the sight of the nations." And I will do in thee that which I have not done, and whereunto I will not do any more the like, because of all thine abominations. You know, I've had people telling, trying to tell others, well, all sin is sin, and all sins are equal before God. Uh, no, they're not. 
all sins are not equal before God. You got sin, and then you got abominations. That's a sin that God really, really, really hates. And those were what they called capital crimes. Those were the ones that the Lord said to put people to death for doing that. But uh, we don't want to do that anymore. And all these Torah keepers, liars, uh, they'll never touch on that stuff. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, we got to keep Torah. Oh, we got to keep Torah. Torah, Torah, Torah. Yeah, there was a movie about that, right? But, um, yeah. They won't touch on the penalty for the abominations. You don't see them going to uh, San Francisco to uh, carry out Torah. No. No, you sure won't. You know, let's take a look at something. All right, let's go to John chapter 19. Uh, Pilate is uh, in a, giving Jesus his trial. John 19, 1. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe. Uh, so they're mocking Jesus. And said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again, and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. So, Jesus is being brought before the you-know-whos, and Pilate doesn't see any reason to, uh, you know, Punish Jesus. I find no fault in him. Verse 5. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. When the chief priests therefore and the officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him, and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. And these are not Catholic priests, by the way. The Vatican didn't exist. Verse 7. The Jews, the Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. And buddy boy, let me tell you something. I, when you start drawing crowds like Jesus did, you know, thousands of people, you better believe that Pilate had spies sent to go and listen to Jesus and what he was teaching. If he didn't, he was a fool. I will guarantee you he had sent spies and he knew exactly what Jesus was teaching. We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. And you better believe that Pilate heard about all the miracles. Jesus raising the dead. Jesus giving sight to the blind. Making the lame being able to walk. The deaf and dumb being able to hear and speak. You better believe Pilate knew all these things. We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid. Why was he afraid? Because he had heard of all the things that Jesus had done. I mean, if I told you, oh, I'm the Son of God, you know, you'd say, oh, Bob's crazy, or Bob's having a, an acid trip, or flashbacks, or something, you know. Because I'm not raising the dead. I'm not healing people. I wish I did have a gift of healing. But I don't. I've asked for it. So far the answer's been no. But hey, what can I tell you? 
I'd love to go to a children's hospital and empty it out and tell everybody that Benny Hinn's a fraud. Because if Benny Hinn was real, why doesn't he go to the children's hospital and empty it out? Oh, that's right. Uh, Dr. Cohen and Dr. Goldberg and Silverstein would probably have him killed. Yeah. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid. And went again into the judgment hall and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? In other words, who are you? What, what, what's going on here? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then Pilate saith unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Listen carefully. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. The greater sin. Yeah, there's sin, and then there's the greater sin. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. Oh, yeah. You see, they bore false witness against, the you-know-whos bore false witness against Christ, accused him of all kinds of things, and they call, they're they calling for his murder. Oh, yeah. They have the greater sin. Verse 12, And when everybody tells you, Oh, Rome killed Jesus, Rome killed Jesus, I don't think so. Verse 12, John 19, 12, And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him. You'll never hear that taught in John Hagee's church. Uh-uh. Mm, it was the Roman Catholic Church and the Vatican and the Pope. They put Jesus to death. Liars. God has a place for those people. And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. Oh yeah, you let this guy go, or we're going to charge you with treason and sedition before Rome and Caesar. And you can explain to Caesar why you let this guy go. Because he claims that he's a king. Wow. Let's go back. Well, hold on. All right, let's go to 1 John chapter 5, verse 12, I guess. You won't hear this taught in John Hagee's church either. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. So if you don't have Jesus, you don't have life. Period. End of story. Verse 13. These things have I written unto you that ye uh, that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And if you're saying Yeshua HaMashiach, uh, you might find out that uh, that's not the guy in the King James Bible. The complete Jewish Bible turns Jesus into Yeshua, which turns into the morning star in Revelation 22. And then when you go to Isaiah 14, the guy that fell from heaven is the morning star. You know, the one that's going to the pit to be covered with worms? Yeah. Jesus is Yeshua. Yeshua is the morning star. And the Yeshua, the morning star, is cast out of heaven and going to the pit to be covered with worms. It's amazing how that works, huh? 
Oh, uh, well, no, by the way, the complete Jewish Bible is not the only one that does that. The NIV does the same thing. Oh, how those that uh, put those Bibles together must laugh at the stupidity of those that read it. Oh, don't follow that King James. That's that's old, archaic, hard to understand. Here, you need a nice modern Bible written in modern English, like the NIV, that turns Jesus into Lucifer. I'm sorry, Lucifer's cast out of heaven, not the morning star, which is Jesus. Oh, how they must laugh. They laugh now. But there's going to come a day when they're not going to be laughing. That ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Let me tell you something, people. Gabriel, the angel Gabriel, told Joseph and Mary his name was Jesus. The New Testament was written in Greek, not Hebrew, for a reason. I know I've beat that horse to death, but I'm going to beat it some more. There is no Hebrew New Testaments. It was the you-know-whos that killed Christ. It was the you-know-whos that killed the apostles. And it was the you-know-whos that been murdering Christians for almost 2,000 years. And it's coming to a head. Wait until the guillotines come out. The laws of Noah. The nine laws of Noah. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look into it. That ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. You know, if you want something in prayer, make sure it's in God's will. Uh, James chapter 1 says, If any of us lack understanding, let him ask of God. Hey, if you're reading the Bible and it doesn't make sense, ask the Lord in prayer for understanding. I believe he'll give it to you. If you're asking for 1,040-pound a, a gold bars, uh, if it's his, his will, you'll have them, but uh, don't count on it being his will. I would love to have a winning lotto ticket, a few million dollars. I'd, I'd probably have a make a Christian movie. But that's not the Lord's will, at least not so far. You know? Maybe Benny Hinn can give you a Holy Ghost machine gun to shoot down all those heretics that are against him. Yeah. Yeah, he actually said that. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Listen carefully. This is why I'm reading all this stuff. If any man see his brother sin a sin, which is not unto death. You know, there's sin, and then there's a sin unto death. Capital crime, witchcraft, uh, the people in San Francisco. Yeah. If any man see his brother sin a sin, which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. So, if somebody's into Satanism, don't pray for that. Uh-uh. No. But if it's a minor, well, you know, a regular sin, yeah, that's a difference. There's a sin unto death, and then there's a sin not unto death. Verse 17, all unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. 
And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God in eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Back to Ezekiel, chapter 5, verse 9. God pronouncing judgment, he says, And I will do in thee that which I have not done, and whereunto I will not do any more the like, because of all thine abominations. God's going to spank and kick some rear end. Verse 10. Therefore, listen to this. Therefore the fathers shall eat the sons in the midst of thee, and the sons shall eat their fathers. And we're not talking about it in a sexual way, people. We're talking about cannibalism. And I will execute judgments in thee, and the whole remnant of thee will I scatter into all the winds. And you know what, people? It, they did. They, they, they cooked each other and during the siege. You go read about that. There was a woman that cooked her son, her baby. And, oh. And uh, when you see something that says natural flavors on the ingredients, uh, they're actually using, uh, yeah, I understand that they're uh, using aborted babies for food flavorings. You know that collagen that you're taking pills? Where do you think that stuff comes from? Yeah. You know, I, there was a nurse that um, was wondering, you know, all these aborted children, uh, they were collecting them at the end of the day, and then FedEx would come and pick them up. And they were going somewhere. And she started tracing it and finding out that uh, some went to pig farms, some went to food companies, others were going to cosmetic, and some were going to medical. And the pre-trib rapture people think, oh, well, we're not going to be here for this. You know, God loves us. We're the church. Yeah, well, Jesus said we were to be the salt of the earth, and if the salt had lost its flavor, it was good for nothing but to be cast on the ground and to be walked over. Now, that's the Bob paraphrase. You ever heard of somebody being set, called a doormat, being walked all over? Uh, Nike has a rapper that, uh, you know, that satanic music, you know, he uh, is putting out a special 666 uh, shoes, yeah, with a drop of blood, with a pentagram on it. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. And they're only going to uh, make 666 pairs. 666, yeah. I think it's, what's his name, Little Nas or whatever. And uh, he's got a children's show. And everybody's like, oh, yeah, well, we ought, to, we ought to boycott that. Why don't you find out who owns the, uh, or controls the, uh, the media that's putting this stuff on for the children? Why, why are you worried about Nas or whatever his, little Nas or whatever his name is? Why don't you find out who's behind the media that's putting this stuff on for your children? Instead of worrying about a rapper. You know, if you want to kill a tree, you don't you don't chop off a branch. You go for the root. Yeah. Therefore the father shall eat the sons in the midst of thee, and the son shall eat their fathers. And I will execute judgments in thee, and the whole remnant of thee will I scatter into the winds. And oh, before I forget people, I am on archive.org. 
So if something happens to me on the tube, I'll be there. So, or you can do a, a search. I'm also on BitChute and a couple other places. Just, you know, Google, Google well, Google's not best, but uh, maybe Dogpile or somebody, uh, Chaplain Bob Walker, you'll find me, you know. I'm on a lot of platforms, but they're all garbage. Verse 11. Wherefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, surely because thou hast defiled my sanctuary with all thy detestable things and with all thine abominations, therefore will I also diminish thee. God's going to make them small. Neither shall mine eye spare, neither will I have any pity. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, when your time of trouble comes and you're worshiping Satan... Ask Satan to help you. Don't ask me. Uh-uh. You don't want you don't want God the Father. So why don't you have uh the, the God below? Yeah, the, our their father below. Not their father above, but the one below. Verse 12. A third part of thee shall die with the pestilence, and with the famine shall they be consumed in the midst of thee, and a third part shall fall by the sword round about thee. And I will scatter a third part into all the winds, and I will draw, draw out a sword after them. Thus shall mine anger be accomplished, and I will cause my fury to rest upon them, and I will be comforted, and they shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it in my zeal when I have accomplished my fury in them. All right, let's read uh, 13 again. Thus shall mine anger be accomplished, and I will cause my fury to rest upon them, and I will be comforted, and they shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it in my zeal when I have accomplished my fury in them. Moreover, I will make thee waste and a reproach among the nations that are round about thee in the sight of all that pass by. So it shall be a reproach and a taunt an instruction and an astonishment unto the nations that are round about thee when I shall execute judgments in thee in anger and in fury and in furious rebukes. I, the Lord, have spoken it. When I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine evil arrows of famine huh let's take a look at something all right so ezekiel 5 16 when i the lord shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine remember that evil arrows which shall be for their destruction destruction and which I will send to destroy you. And I will increase the famine upon you and will break your staff of bread. Let's go to Revelation chapter 6. Um, you know, 6 is uh, it's in the Bible quite a few times. Adam was created on the sixth day. Uh, you got 666, the number of the beast, the mark of the beast, right? The number of the beast. Um, certain numbers pop up in the Bible. I mean, it's that's a whole study in and of itself. I met a guy once that that was his specialty, numbers in the Bible. I mean, he was really amazing. He, I, I mean, I, I understood a lot of what he was saying. Some of it was kind of beyond my comprehension. Of course, I was a baby believer back then. But uh, one, three, six, seven... Uh, 9, 11, 12, 13, 24, and 40, those numbers pop up a lot in the Bible. A lot. So, all right, let's take a look. Oh, and honestly, my opinion, I think the people that uh, put together the numbers for the chapters and verses and what have you, I honestly, I think they were divinely inspired. I really do. So, 
Revelation 6. Let's look at this. Verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, and one of the beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. You know, just about every Bible college and church will say, this is the devil, the Antichrist. I'm not so sure. I honestly think this is the Lord. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. But that's my suspicion. Because it's on a white horse, and he has a bow. And a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. Well, what about uh, what we just read in Ezekiel? Arrows of famine. Evil arrows of famine. He's got a bow. What do you do with a bow? You shoot arrows, right? And who's going to go forth conquering and to conquer? Verse 3. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red. And power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Red. What are communists called? Reds. Communism has killed more people in the last hundred years than probably any other time in history. And what is their color? All the flags of communism? Red. Coincidence? I don't think so. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny. So basically, a penny was a day's wage, back, back in these days, was a day's wage for an unskilled laborer. What was the measure of wheat? I don't know exactly, but probably a loaf of bread. I don't know. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. So basically a day's wage for an unskilled laborer to buy a loaf of bread. If, I think that's what it means. What did we read about in Ezekiel? Evil arrows of famine. This is God's judgment upon the wicked earth. You know, you want to understand the New Testament, you got to read the Old Testament, period. Verse 8. Uh, I'm sorry, verse 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death. And hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts, the beast of the earth. Are these four-legged beasts? Or are they two-legged beasts? Good question. Verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Remember, people, the Godhead. We were made in God's image. Man has a body, a soul, and a spirit. And right here, when he opened the fifth seal, he saw under the altar of God the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, So when you hear people say, Oh, soul sleep, when you die, you know, you're, you don't exist. 
It's like, you know, you're a little kid and, uh, you know, it's Christmas Eve and you go to sleep and then you wake up in the morning and it's Christmas. Yay! And you get to open the presents. You know, I don't know. No. No. The souls that are under the altar, verse 10, and they cried with a loud voice saying, you know, these guys are dead and buried and don't know anything. How come they're crying and saying things? How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? See, these guys are talking. They're saying, hey, Lord, how long until you avenge us of those that killed us? How long? Well, that's the Bob transliteration. Verse 11. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Do you believe in soul sleep? No. Who teaches soul sleep? Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. Which is reason enough to discount it. Verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. You want to read this? Read it in Book of Joel. A minor prophet. Minor in size, not minor in impro uh, importance. Uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel are considered major prophets because of the size. Verse 13. And the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. That's going to be one heck of an earthquake, people. You know, the Bible's not in chronological order. People try to make it out to be, and it's not. Verse 15. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and their chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Oh yeah, look at all these rich people. They got bunkers, right? They're going to hide themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Verse 16, And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? And the answer is, none of you devils. Ezekiel 5, verse 16. When I, the Lord, when I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine, which shall be for their destruction, and which I will send to destroy you, and I will increase the famine upon you, and will break your staff of bread. Yeah, a day's wage for a loaf of bread. Verse 17. So will I send upon you famine and evil beasts, two-legged evil beasts. So will I send upon you famine and evil beasts, and they shall bereave thee. What does that mean? Your children, when they die, you're going to be bereaved of your children. And they shall bereave thee, and pestilence, disease, and blood shall pass through thee, and I will bring the sword upon thee. I, the Lord, have spoken it. Uh, would you say the Lord's PO'd? If you don't know what PO'd means, well, look it up. Uh, I saw a bumper sticker once. It was really funny, I thought. It says, uh, it says, Jesus is coming back, and boy, is he pissed. I thought, you know, there you go. Uh, that's modern English. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, this Bible study on Ezekiel. Um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father 
and his only begotten son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.